Tom Penn, NBA TV analyst and a former Blazers vice president of basketball operations. NBA TV will feature over 30 hours of live free agency focused pra- uh, programming starting tomorrow. 11 live hours on Sunday and Monday. And Tom, kind enough to join us. Tom, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me start with this. Of how many deals do you think uh, big deals are already done that these players and teams know exactly what's going to happen? I think a handful of them are pretty close to done. You know, the rule is you're not supposed to talk until that deadline kicks in, but the the unwritten rule is if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So uh, I think everybody's out there talking. Although, Dan, I will say that I feel like some of the top three agents, Durant, Kawhi, I don't think they've made their decision. I don't think those deals are done. And I think they're both looking forward to the moment of their true unrestricted free agency where they can just take their meetings, listen to the plan, see what other moves get made to uh, make that plan a reality, and then they'd make their decision based off of that. Who do you think's the first domino in free agency? I think Clay Thompson stays. We would all agree with that. I think the big question is, and I think Kawhi comes to L.A. I believe he comes to the Clippers. Okay although Vegas has him going back to Toronto, which they usually know. Um, And uh, so I think the biggest domino is sort of the Durant and the way things shake out. I think if Durant goes on the move, somebody goes with him significant. Um, And then it starts waterfalling after that. I think Kyrie's on the move, likely to uh, one of the New York teams. Um, You know, so we'll, we'll see. I, it isn't clear, which is what makes it fun. If you had the money and if you had the cap space, would you take on Kevin Durant? I would. Yeah, I think uh, with his style of play and with his level of skill and everything we've heard, you know, it's, he's not like an explosive athletic, has to get his uh, offense that way. I think for the next five years after he recovers – He's got plenty of game left in him. He's got plenty of scoring left in him, and he's such a unique talent. Uh, I would, yeah, I'd bring him. I'd either bring him back or go after him. Would you want if I if you're the Lakers and I could give you Kyrie, D'Angelo Russell, or Kemba Walker? I'd say neither. I'd rather go <laughs> sprinkle that. I'd, I'd rather sprinkle that money across multiple players, uh, whether that's two or three or or whatever else that's going to give more of a chance of a true team there. I don't think they need another star like that. Um, And I don't think they have the money to get it done anyway. So when you think back to what Pat Riley did in Miami, the big key there was that Dwayne Wade took less to begin with. And then LeBron and Bosh followed him. That gave him an extra 15 million bucks to play with for the next three guys. That doesn't happen here. LeBron's got his max. Um, Anthony Davis has his max. And it's just sort of a scenario where you're not going to get somebody to come in at a discount. So I think they need to uh, shop for quality free agents and then build this thing over the course of the year. Why don't free agents want to play for the Knicks? It's just such a mess. I mean, and it's actually gotten messier. When you look at their roster – the cupboard is bare. I mean, they have. What do they have to be excited about other than the idea of R.J. Barrett, right? And unproven rookie. Every veteran in the world knows that could go either way. And it's just such a mess from the top. From Jim Jim Dolan, you know, everybody knows it's just a, he got fined again for freezing the media out this week. <laughs> All that stuff matters to these guys. Um, and. You know, you have to be a unique person who wants the spotlight regardless of how brightly it burns. And that's the other thing there. If it's not going well, you're in that spotlight, but that thing burns. So, uh, I don't know. It's just such an unappealing situation with the revolving door with coaches, with players, and their inability to sustain any sort of plan. There's a report that the Rockets are interested perhaps in a sign-and-trade with Jimmy Butler I, I, I can't imagine Jimmy Butler 
going into that situation and making that situation better. I does his style first of all does his style fit with what the Rockets or who the Rockets are and what do you give up in a sign and trade for Jimmy Butler? Yeah, it's complicated. To his style, you know, I think Dan, Mike D'Antoni is such a gifted offensive coach that he just likes talent. So if you get him any kind of talent, he unleashes whatever it is offensively and gets the most out of them. You know, to your point, what do they give up since they have so much money committed to Chris Paul and James Harden and so on? You know, they're over the cap. This is have to be a near dollar for dollar swing. So you either have to stack up about 14 players to get there or you throw Chris Paul in it. I think it's most interesting if Chris Paul goes out because it's well known he wants to move. Um, and I, you know, the big problem there, I feel, is the fact that there's only one ball to go around and James Harden just dominates it so much that if you had somehow could pull it off and you had Chris Paul with James Harden with Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler isn't exactly a go along quietly with the team program kind of guy. You know, he's grousy on his best day. So uh, I don't know. That was curious to me. <laughs> well, if, if and you can't you can't ship Chris Paul to Philadelphia because Phil, why would Philadelphia want Chris Paul? Right. Particularly with his salary and his contract and wherever Chris Paul goes, Chris Paul's going to want to go there. You don't bring a crabby Chris Paul into the locker room because he'd just be a load. Um, that, you know, it's a real trick bag for them. Uh, likely they just come back with what they have and some incremental improvements or changes. But uh, you never know. That, that's his whole thing with the velocity of movement. The more players start moving, the more you'll see big moves because there are slots for them to go. You can do multi-team deals. And, Dan, I don't ever remember a year where the East – and the West are both so wide open, yeah. you know, with no, with no clear favorite in either case. So you've got every team incentivized to effectively go for it um, and do it for next year. So that that is exciting in terms of of uh, you, you're going to have the intention with the opportunity, and we'll see what shakes out. Can Mello play anymore? I don't think so. I mean, if you can't play with Mike D'Antoni and what I just described, I think it's going to be tricky anywhere else. Um, yeah, I'm right you know, there with I, you I, on that. I thought you, the Rockets are perfect for him, and then I thought the Lakers need shooters, and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't stick with one, and the other team wasn't interested in him. And he's he's 35, but I don't know if he's considered an old 35. But I mean, he went downhill quickly. Yeah, I think he's an old 35. Now, that being said, the game is a lot easier around that LeBron James character. <laughs> so, um, you know, and it's a low-risk proposition. The Lakers only have, what, four or five players under contract, three of which you know. So um, there's plenty of opportunity there, and he'd be a minimum guy, and they're going to have a lot of these minimum ring chasers. They should get the best of the best the way the Warriors have in past years. They should get – the David West type players that are looking to come in, chase a ring because yeah. all the players know if you're with LeBron, you got a great shot and they have playing time to offer, which is the other thing all these guys want. So I think over the course of the season, you'll see at the trade deadline, they may get somebody. And then when all these buyouts occur and veterans are available, they'll go there on a minimum just to uh, play around in LA and chase a ring. Got a wild prediction. Do I? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what qualifies as wild. I think um, I'm curious to see what happens in Philadelphia. You know, they're pretty exposed there with Jimmy Butler and with Tobias Harris and uh, Reddick. Reddick, yeah, those guys all three, and with the frenzy that's going to happen, you know that once the once the players go, they're gone. And there's no ability to replace, and it happens fast. So, as built as Philadelphia has been, you know, as sort of a, a perennial contender, they have a lot of work to do in this next week to ensure that they're, they just keep what they got. Would you trade Ben Simmons? Uh, uh, you know, that's interesting. I my question is whether how great is he? 
in terms of what they're trying to accomplish because the clock's ticking and those extensions now come and then you're just locked into it. Clear and beat is a player, a plus, you know, you build around him. Uh, Simmons is so special, but if he's not in the gym right now working on the, his jump shot, <laughs> I might trade him because he got to figure that out. You know, that just gets exposed through a, a, a playoff or a you know, championship run. Um, Whose jumper is more fixable, though, Tom? We're talking to Tom Penn from NBA TV, former uh, Portland Trailblazer vice president of basketball operations. Uh, Lonzo Ball or Ben Simmons? I think Lonzo. I mean, he's at least proven at times he can make shots. He's willing to take shots. But ben doesn't even look at the rim. Um, I remember his first summer league, and I was intrigued because he had a bunch of attempts, and I always thought takes were as good as makes for him. Just just get confident, get used to shooting, miss, who cares? Uh, but he hasn't evolved in that way. He's so gifted with the ball, with his size, he gets to the rim. Lonzo has proven in spurts and has made big shots, and he's certainly willing to take them. And uh, I think that's more fixable. Although I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to have to fix either. Who wins more games, as crazy as this may sound, New Orleans or the Lakers next season? Lakers. Not even close. I don't think it's close. I mean, you got to remember just how special LeBron is and Anthony Davis. I mean, these are two top five players in the league. So that's a, that's a massive move. I don't think they're going to be instant champions necessarily. Uh, they, they could still win the West. Um but they're, uh, if they stay healthy, if LeBron stays healthy, I mean, he can do it himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, not at that age. I don't, I don't know, Tom. I, I, this is the first time I probably had doubts about him and his greatness. Uh, well, it's the first, well, it's the first time he missed the finals in like 10 years. Yeah, I know, but he... He feels like it feels like this load management is is, you know, the next big issue for the commissioner. And, you know, these if I'm these guys and I look at what Kawhi did, I'm going to go, you know what? Let's just get to the playoffs and be rested. So maybe I play 65 games and uh, I chill for 17. Do you, do you see this as a growing trend for these players over the age of 30, 32? Sure, get paid and don't work. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's America. That's the American. That's the new American dream. We all need load I, uh, management. I got to put that in my next contract. <laughs> uh, hey, great to check in with you, Tom. And uh, you know, we uh, we appreciate your time. Have fun with NBA TV with the free agency period. All right, Dan. Thanks. That's uh, Tom Penn, NBA TV, the former uh, Blazers VP of Basketball Operations. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.